Hi booktube, this is Johnny. I thought I'd make a video tonight since I don't know what else to do with myself. And so I can always make a video even though it's only been six hours since I made my last video. It seems like I made my last video a long time ago. But I have been mentioning um, t that I was going to show my to be red pile. And we are in the month of December. And we are going to go into the new year. And I'm not, I'm not always sure what I'm going to be reading throughout the new year, the year 2018. But these are some of the books I have on my to be read, to be read pile here in the, they're not down the lower level where the most of our books are, our library, but they're on in the living room on the coffee table. And I can't seem to take these down. So maybe I still have interest in them and reading them. Now, there are certain books that I have been reading for the last couple of months, and I've shown them, I don't know how many times. Uh, for example, I showed you today The Night Ocean, a novel by Paul LaForge. I do want to read this this month, and I want to finish it. I have shown this book, too, Between the World, the Woods and the Water, the travel memoir. Uh, I still want to read this in December and keep it up here and maybe read it in January. And I still want to read the collected essays of Elizabeth Hardwick. I've only read like one or two essays in this volume and I really want to get into it, but... And I've shown this volume countless times last couple of months. This is the Book of Disquiet, a complete edition by Fernando Piss. Paseo. This is translated out of Portuguese by Margaret Jo Costa. And I still don't want to take this down the lower level for Love and Money, A Writing Life by Jonathan Rabin. These are essays. And I still want to read Fantasyland, How America Went Haywire, A 500-Year History by Kurt Anderson. Uh, I still want to read these books. These are the ones I primarily want to read if I'm going to read anything. Uh, also, I have been reading The Lonely City, Adventures in the Heart of Being Alone. I read this this afternoon. I'm almost halfway through it. I want to finish that. Take it back to the library. No, it's not a library book. It's my own book. I also have shown you this book. I'm probably going to read this tonight. I checked out the library. It was mentioned in The Lonely City, The Art of Cruelty, A Reckoning. This is kind of like on... Oh, I told you it was kind of difficult to say what it's about. So, but it's described as... Described... If you were to catalog it in a library. Moral and Ethical Aspects of Cruelty and Art. So I've been reading that. And I have, I read today some more uh, Schlesinger, The Imperial Historian. I have, I still want to read this. I haven't gotten bored with it. I haven't given up on it. I'm, so yeah, I'm coming to his period with John F. Kennedy in the 1960. I just read there today when uh, Eisenhower was running for the second term. In 1956, reading about the Suez, the Suez Canal crisis, and so I, I still want to read these. These are the things I really are focused on in reading. These books. Now, these other books are books that I have read in the last several months, but I have not picked up recently. And uh, Angela Carter, Shaking a Leg, Collected Writings. I still want to keep this up here. I might read it in the, the coming new year. I, I was really enjoying her biography, the biography in Angela Carter. 
The Invention of Anthony Angela Carter, a biography by Edmund Gordon. I was really enjoying this. I don't, I really want to get back into it. And I was reading a while back, The Romantic Outlaws, The Extraordinary Lives of Mary Wollstonecraft and Mary Shelley by Charlotte Gordon. I was really enjoying this. I don't want to take it down the lower level. I really want to get back into it. And I was reading this Vindication, The Life of Mary Wollstonecraft by Lynn Gordon. I was really enjoying it. And I was really into The Annotated Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, edited it with a foreword and notes by Leslie S. Klinger. These things I really want to get back into in January or February of 2018. And I really was getting into the, this new this new biography on Henry David Thoreau, A Life, by Laura Daslow Walls. Uh, I really want to get into this. These other things, I'm not sure. I'm, I probably might take into the lower level. Nomads, a hotel, travels in time and space, by Sis Nesterbaum, and I. A Life of Isaiah Berlin by Michael Eknathniff. And I was reading a couple of months ago The Last Intellectuals of American Culture in the Age of Academia by Russell Jacob. This book, I really might just keep going into this one here. Virgin uh, the World Broken Two. Virginia Woolf, T.S. Eliot, D.H. Lawrence, E.M. Foster, and the Year That Changed Literature, which was 1922, the, the, the right, beginning of modernism after the First World War. I was really enjoying this, and I'd, I'd like to get back into it. And this is another book by uh, Angela Carter, The Bloody Chamber, short stories. So those are the kind of things I keep up here on my To Be Red pile. Now there are other books in there on my to, to Be Read pile that I have not shown because those might go into the spring. Uh, and I don't really have any books coming in the mail that I can remember right now. I do want to order that William Perkins, who was a 17th century English Puritan divine, his fifth volume of his collected works, which comes out, the, now they're saying in January 2018. I do, I do want to get that, but I'm not sure if I'll read it. So those are the things I have on my to, read, to be read pile. Things that I want to get back into. I definitely want to finish reading The Night Ocean. I definitely want to read Schlesinger, The Imperial Historian. I definitely want to read The Lonely City Adventures in the Art of Being Alone by Olivia Lang. And like I said, this is a library book, The Art of Cruelty, A Reckoning by Maggie Nelson. Uh, this is due on the 22nd of December, so I might just keep reading it. And like I said, I was enjoying The World Broken Too by Bill Goldstein, and I was reading with enjoyment Between the Woods and the Water, which is a travel memoir on foot to Constantinople, the Middle Danube, to the Iron Gates. And I've always enjoyed reading the, the writings of Elizabeth Hardwick, and I've read this, the Book of Disquiet, in the past. This is a new edition, the complete edition. I like reading this, just, I just like reading it when I get tired of everything else. And I was enjoying reading For Love and Money, A Writing Life, and, uh, and I, w I was enjoying reading Fantasyland, How America Won Hey Why 500 Year, Kurt Anderson. These are the books I definitely want to read, and I don't want to take them down the lower level to be forgotten in all the chaos and the dust and the mess down there. So those are my to, read, to be red pile. The ones I, I just can't find within me to take them downstairs and just forget about them. 
because I wasn't reading all these books and I was really getting into them, but then I get sidetracked or I get off into some other trip or I get some book in the mail or I find some book at some thrift store and I get into it. So that's what's going on as far as my reading schedule or what is on my list to be read in December of 2017 going into January and probably February 2018. Like I said, I, I don't plan to go to thrift stores. What I fantasize most about every day, to be honest, and this is kind of an obsession, and I wish I could get free of it, but I'd like to get rid of at least 6,000 books. I'd like to break my library down to at least two or 3,000. And so every day I play in my head what books I would get rid of, book, what books I would keep, and it's becoming kind of like a something that's just always on my brain, and I get kind of sick of it. I'm always thinking about getting bookshelves, or having a book sale, or taking books down to the library to be sold at the Friends of the Library used book sale. And it's just becoming a kind of a boring kind of day trip. It's got repeating, 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 and I get kind of sick of it. Uh, sometimes I look at old photos of the lower level about three or four years ago and how it was so free of books, just, just books on shelves and everything was neat and everything was not cluttered and there was no chaos, there was no mess. And then I tell myself, I'm 65 years old, I'm going to be 66 years old next year. I can't read all those books. Why do I keep them? Why do I hang on to them? Why am I obsessed with not getting rid of them? It's just, it's just illogical. It's irrational. It's a state of book madness. It just, it just irritates me. Because one of my constant daydreams is living in simplicity. Living in open space, empty space. No clutter, no dust, just the basic library. Now, I would never get rid of my Christian books because, like I said, a couple, uh, several years ago, I sold over a thousand Christian books. And I don't buy as many as I used to anymore because I have everything that I would want. And uh, I'm mainly into reading the Bible and reading old commentaries. and I'm not really much into reading. I spend a lot of time reading things just to meditate on them and, and reading. Uh, there's just not much coming out as far as Christian literature that I really like. So yeah, so that's my book world tonight. Like I said, it's December the 12th. It's 8.41 here in West Michigan. Tomorrow's a Wednesday. Tomorrow I have to cover for somebody at the library used bookstore, the book nook, from 3 to 5. I don't know if I'll get it out because it's, it's, we're in the snowstorm and we might be snowed in. So I might call in tomorrow and say I can't make it. So one thing else I wanted to mention that's kind of not book related and that's that when we come to the end of the year it's important that we don't live with regrets. I always find myself at the end of another year looking back at my life and and cringing at all the stupid things I did, the foolish decisions, the, the how I mistreated people and how I was so so reckless when I was young. So all you people out there who are young Think twice whatever you do. Don't don't wind up with regrets. Don't wind up someday wishing you had done things different. Love people. Treat people with kindness. Don't be selfish. Seek to deny yourself and not uh, rip off people or be cruel to people or think better, higher than you, you know, think more higher than yourself than you are. 
It's good to be humble. I know I look at myself and I have nothing to boast about. Everything I have is by God's goodness, His grace, and His mercy. I deserve nothing. But when I was young, I did a lot of stupid things. Things that I, I regret. So don't live with regrets. When you have a new year, make a resolution on New Year's Eve to live without regrets. So anyway, I hope you're having a good night. I'll sign off and I'll probably read The Art of Cruelty or I'll just sit in the dining room, not in the dining room, the living room because I, like I said, I'm kind of out of it. I'm feeling kind of sick inside and kind of burnt out. So I can just sit in the dark and pray, pray for grace. So I'll drink my coffee. And until next time, and thank you for the subscribers, thank you that who have left, thank you for the comments, and thank you just for being out there. Keep reading, keep seeking, keep, keep on going.